Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Taking Stock Live. My name is Kalila Reynolds. It's my pleasure to be with you yet another week. I am traveling this week, so I'm not in the usual place, but the show must go on. We get it done as usual. Now Fleetwood Jamaica is expanding and if you've never heard of them, you're going to learn a lot about this company and what they have in store because their latest acquisition saw them spending $70 million, Jamaican dollars, on the purchase of Starfish Oils, the aromatherapy brand. How will this takeover unfold? We're going to break it down. But before we go, don't forget to, or I should say before we start, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so just yet. And let me know in the comments where you're joining us from, what part of Jamaica and what part of the world. I love to see people joining us from all over the place. Now here's a look at what's coming up in tonight's show, followed by What's Hot in Business. And come on, let's get this money. On this episode of Taking Stock, Fleetwood Jamaica announced their acquisition of Starfish Oils. The deal is said to significantly expand the Fleetwood range of products. But how will it impact the company's growth and profitability? CEO of Fleetwood Richard Coe joins us live to share more on this major milestone. And the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. Guardian Holdings' annual report for 2023 is out. How did they perform? We'll discuss. But first, here's what's hot, brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. King's counsel Tom Tavares Finson, the attorney representing Alliance Investment, and its former principals Robert and Peter Chin, says his clients will be suing the Bank of Jamaica and Financial Investigations Division for damages done to their personal and professional reputations. The news follows last week's announcement that Alliance was cleared of all 17 charges laid against them by the BOJ and FID. Alliance and the Chin brothers were charged in late 2021 for several breaches of the Bank of Jamaica Act and the Banking Services Act. Alliance would go on to sell all of its business assets and the Chins stepped down from their positions within the group of companies. Tavares Finson said the FID's incompetence caused serious damage to the Chin's reputation. The government is setting aside $150 million to help alleviate water challenges caused by persistent drought conditions. According to Prime Minister Andrew Holness, the money will be used to facilitate the trucking of water and buying and distributing water tanks to hard-hit areas. 50 of the 63 constituencies will each receive an initial 1.5 million, while constituencies in the parishes of Hanover, Westmoreland, Clarendon and St. Elizabeth will receive 2.5 million each. The Prime Minister said municipal corporations in Clarendon, St. Elizabeth and Westmoreland will each receive an additional $5 million for drought mitigation efforts, while the Hanover Municipal Corporation will receive $7.5 million. Jamaica Broilers has teamed up with Trinidadian conglomerate Hadco to put the poultry brand Best Dressed Chicken on shelves in the Twin Island country. The collaboration marks Best Dressed Chicken's entry into the Trinidadian market and will see its products, which include chicken tenders, nuggets, breast strips and others, being available in supermarkets across the country. Verticast Media Group is asking the courts to force Digicel and Cable and Wireless to broadcast its C-Sport channels on their cable network in Jamaica. According to the lawsuit, Digicel and Cable and Wireless, which operates as Flow in Jamaica, have refused to show Verticast's C-Sport channels throughout the region since they were outbid two years ago for the English Premier League over the 2022 and 2024 seasons. Verticast is also seeking monetary compensation from what it says is a lost business from the actions of both Digicel and Flow. As Apple sales continue to decline in China, the tech giant is reportedly shifting its docks to India. iPhone sales in China fell by 24% in the first six weeks of 2024, forcing the company to look elsewhere. According to Bloomberg, Apple produced 14 billion US dollars worth of iPhones in India last year. The company is also reportedly trying to diversify its supply chain because relations between the US and China have worsened. 
Apple now manufactures around 14% of its iPhones in India, which is double the amount it produced there last year. What's Hot was brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. Whew, it's finally over. All four lessons in money marketing are done and uploaded to Money Mission, so you can watch the videos now. I've literally shared almost everything I know about social media and business. You want to know how I've been successful, how I've grown my platforms, how I get people to buy? Take money marketing. Let's get this money. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. It's another episode of Taking Stock. Let me see where you guys are checking in from this week. Let's start out with, let me see who we have. Oh, where did it go? Where did it go? Comments. All right, here we go. Starting out with Kish. Checking in from London, we got Nana Sense viewing from far, far away as usual. RN says Ocho Rios in the building. Humble Boss is checking in from Negril. Roswell shouting out from Unity Hall. We got Roger all the way in Philly. We got Jackie in Kingston 7. We got Dr. Lithium who is outside. We got Orlande in Grange Hill. Kish from London. And Robert says from a flight deck. Heading to luncheon in South Korea. That's X-Ray Designs. Big up yourself. You are far X-Ray Designs today. We have Strong Link in Manor Park and Michael in Portmore. I'm actually joining you today all the way from Miami. Not as far as South Korea, but I'm not in Jamaica this week. Uh, but like I said, the show must go on as usual. Today we're talking about Fleetwood Jamaica. They are a major player in Jamaica's distribution network. And the news this week is all about their acquisition of Starfish Oils. And so, of course, our viewers start wondering, could an IPO be next? What do they have up their sleeve? Joining us to discuss is CEO of Fleetwood Jamaica, Richard Cole. Thanks for joining us, Richard. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Kalilo. Thank you for having me. And some people may know you as the vice president of the JMEA, Jamaica yes. Manufacturers and Exporters Association. I was like, I know that name sounds familiar. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, JMEA, that's where I know you from. Yep. We we uh, met several years ago. We haven't cra crossed paths recently. So hopefully we will. Right. It's been, a, it's been a while. So for those who don't know much about Fleetwood, give us some background on the company. Okay, um, so the, the history of Fleetwood was that um, it was started by two Irish brothers uh, from Ireland. They moved to Jamaica to start a paint brush manufacturing company in November 11th, 1971, a couple months after my birthday. And um, they operated the company. Birthday, and, birthday meaning the day you were born? Date of birth, yes. The day <laughs> you were born um so yes i've dated myself um so they they owned the company until the 80s and um uh they moved back to ireland in the 80s and and the company was then acquired by a gentleman by the name of peter clare and peter held on to the company until 2019 uh, when i acquired the company from him uh so fleetwood uh, is a company comprised of three divisions, now three divisions. So we have the Fleetwood Home Improvements uh, division, which comprises of uh, products that we manufacture, which are paintbrushes, rollers, mops, wall filler. And we also distribute uh, home improvement products. Uh, and we have trucks that go around the island distributing those products. The second division is around manufacturing services and we manufacture personal care products. So we manufacture products such as the well-known award-winning Zimmy hair care line. Um, we also manufacture Top Brass, which is an Amazon bestseller. Laundry. Uh, oh, Glory Top Laundry. Brass is you? Top yes. Brass. I know a very Brass. popular brand. Good for dandruff, I hear. Absolutely. Um, we also manufacture Glory Laundry Detergent. Uh, and also the smart hand sanitizer that um, was very successful during the COVID era. And we also distribute a range of products for companies such as Revlon, Cream of Nature, Meal, 
and a host of other uh, others. I won't, I won't go through all of them, but um, all of them are beauty care products. Mm -hmm. And now we have a third division, and that division is starfish oils, which makes a variety of products, some of which are behind me. We have the no mosquito candles. We have um, aroma candles. Uh, we have no mosquito spray, massage oils, essential oils, soaps, bath salts, body scrubs. So there's a range of products that um, we have now added to the Fleetwood portfolio. Interesting. So because you are a distributor and manufacturer, people might not be as familiar with the name Fleetwood because it's, it's you're not putting out the brand Fleetwood as a brand that you would see on the shelves, but the brands that you just listed are, are very familiar to many of the people watching. So Absolutely. tell me a bit about yourself. And by the way, this is, like you said, this is no new company, over 50 years in business, which is yep. quite a, a tremendous feat. So tell me about yourself, Richard, how did you get started in business? Um, oh gosh, I, my earlier years was in banking and finance. Um, in London, I worked for some of the top um, financial institutions, nationwide, NatWest and HSBC. I was a manager of um, financial advisors. I would train train them to give financial advice. And uh, in 2012, I moved back to Jamaica and did a stint in finance and uh, debt finance. And uh, in 2016, an opportunity pre presented itself for me to, to join Fleetwood with an aim to acquire the company within three years. And on the third year, we, we executed that. Ah, so this was your first uh, foray into business or entrepreneurship business in, on your in own. In manufacturing. And, and it's so funny because I always, because I used to train and give a financial advice, those are intangible type products. And I always had a desire to, to work with or work for a company that made tangible products. So it was fortuitous for me to be given this opportunity to, to take over Fleetwood. One of our viewers wants to know if all the products that you mentioned are being manufactured in Jamaica. Uh, so the products that I've mentioned with regard to starfish oils, yes. So all the products you see behind me is manufactured at our 30,000 square foot facility in St. Thomas. And the others that you, apart from Starfish? Uh, so the, the Glory Laundry Detergent, so the products that, that I mentioned that were distributors for, no. Uh, so the Revlon, we used to actually manufacture for Revlon, uh, but that ended in 2019. And um, that, that created an opportunity for us to create our own brand of hair care products. And that's how Zimmy Hair Care was, was created. So oh. Zimmy Hair Care, Top Brass, um, Glory Laundry Detergent, um, those are products that we manufacture at our factory. And then the Revlon, Cream of Nature, uh, Meal, those are products that we import and distribute. One of my team members behind the scenes like, oh, I use the Zimmy Hair Mousse. So, so yeah. It's, I tell you, it's so awesome. funny. There are so many people that now talk about Zimmy. It wasn't so, so much the case around 2019, 2020. But I'll tell you a story. I went um, to a villa recently and got into the shower and, you know, pressed on the pump and lathered up, put it in my hair. And I, I realized this, this is Zimmy. So I went to the staff and I said, I see that you're using Zimmy. And, and uh, the staff member said, yes, yes. I love it and my daughter loves it. And, and this is commonly uh, uh, the feedback that we get uh, when, when we mention Zimmy and the fact that we, own, um, that we manufacture it. So it's a, it's a fantastic product and we're really excited about it. So Raquel says, happy customer of Zimmy. I have Tishan saying, interesting. Now I see the connection. Yeah, we're connecting the dots. So this brings us to the Starfish acquisition. Like how, for how long has this acquisition been on your radar? A, couple, a few months, literally. Um, we had an, our eye on the aromatherapy wellness market. Um, and it was only late last year that we were approached uh, with this opportunity. And within a very short period of time, we uh, entered negotiations, did our due diligence, um, 
and acquired the company in January of this year. So it's literally a few months. A few months. And so, so they approached you about selling. They wanted to exit. Well, I was approached by a colleague. I then contacted the owners of Starfish and we entered negotiations. They were actively looking for a buyer for the company. So there, I was reading the article in the Observer about the deal, and there was a sentence in there that you know, kind of piqued my interest. So it said, "In and it's attributed to you, Richard. It says, in this acquisition, Fleetwood did not assume the receivables, liabilities, or equity of Starfish Oils." I was a little yes. bit confused by that sentence, especially. I understand the receivables, yes, uh, okay. and the liabilities, but the yeah. equity. So you don't, you didn't acquire the right. equity. I'm confused. So, by so what we did was to buy the business, not the company. We didn't buy the legal person, i.e. the business that has uh, that owns the receivables and assumes all of the debt. What we carved out was the assets of the company. So all the inventory, the machinery, and the trademarks. So those, those were the assets that we carved out and, and bought, not the, the company starfish oils so the the um the business that we acquired was subsumed into fleetwood and we now operate starfish oils as a brand within fleetwood so what happens to the equity because if i'm still confused like what happened so who ultimately owns the company so, then? so, so no we well we own the brand we own the assets but the any debts or any receivables remains with the the former owners if if we had gone through the process of trying to acquire the company the due diligence would have been much more ex extensive and it would have taken a lot longer to to acquire the company uh, and in fact the the timeline that starfish oils had to make the sale was quite short so it was actually the best solution that um, we could have arrived at to acquire the company, to keep it running um, and, and to make sure that the customers who use the Starfish Oils brand could continue to, to receive those products. So what will happen to the Starfish company? You own the assets and the trademark. What yeah, will happen well, to the that? Company is now, the company is now, uh, it's a shell. It's a shell okay. that is looking right. to be wound up, oh, um, but the name question. Starfish Oils remains because we have acquired the trademark Starfish Oils. I see. Interesting. I, I don't think I've heard of, of it being done quite this way, at least recently, for sure. So that's that's an interesting move on how you decided to, to do that. So can you give us some insight into how Starfish has been performing? Um, well, over the past years, it, it had not been performing particularly well, which which was one of the reasons why they were looking for someone to acquire the company. But for us, we, we, we saw it as an, a clear opportunity. Um, our plan and mission is to bring, which we have, we've, which we have done, we've brought uh, Starfish into our operations, subsumed it into our operations. And in doing so, we are reducing, looking to reduce the operating costs of, of Starfish Oils so that we make the company more profitable. We're going to be looking to increase the markets that we, we put Starfish Oils into and also at the same time reduce costs. And then we will see improved margins, improve profitability. Um, so it, it had done okay in 2023 but we can see significant um, profitability increased profitability in the coming months and years so you'll be moving the manufacturing to your location where you do zimmy and those other products it has already been done ah. we have we have moved all of the operations under fleetwood so you get economies of scale exactly yes and bring down those expenses bring down yeah. those costs that's that's exactly what we're doing yeah i see and and as for fleetwood in general i think i saw where i have to find back the numbers how is fleetwood doing as a as a company itself 
We're doing well. Um, so during COVID, we, we, our revenues continue to grow. Uh, we remain profitable throughout the years of COVID. And in 2023, we had revenues of 716 million and net profit uh, was on budget at 62 million. So we, we're, we have a strong financial position um, and we are using surpluses to do lots of exciting things, which I guess we'll talk about in, in a few minutes. Well, tell me now. I'm ready. When I hear lots of exciting things being funded by surpluses, I want to know. <laughs> well, um, so on the Starfish Oz line, what we're looking to do is to revamp the look, give it a fresh new look. It has not been, there hasn't been much invested in product development. So we want to make sure that, that there's a fresh new approach to, to the Starfish Oils offering. We're going to be expanding product, um, product offerings as well. We're focusing on... Uh, penetrating new markets um, and um, it, it that's on the starfish oil line but then we have the the Orion side and Fleetwood side that we're doing some really exciting stuff um, our company is always looking to reduce our operating costs and we've in, been investing in solar so we're we're currently 40 percent green and by May this year we'll be 80 percent green uh, or using green energy. Uh, we've acquired three new pieces of a machinery to increase productivity and efficiency. Uh, we're going to be looking at buying a new piece of machinery that will help to automate our paintbrush production. Um, and then, yeah, there's there's just a lot going on, lots of opportunities. And, and because of this Starfish Oil's acquisition over the past couple of days, I've had numerous calls about ideas for new product developments, new partnerships. So it's it's exciting times. I'm sure. We have a couple of questions from the audience. Ryan wants to know. Well, Ryan says, smart move, Richard Coe, CEO of Fleetwood, buying the asset and brands. So I presume you would pay some royalty rights to the original owners? No, no. Um, when we acquired the assets, part of the assets was the <laughs> trademark. So we, we don't have to pay anyone royalties because we own that trademark. So no, no is the answer to that question. Ah, I see. Yeah, makes sense. Next question comes from Stronglink, who says, very creative ownership arrangement, but how is it viewed for tax purposes? Um, no, no different. I mean, the, the acquisition of, of the assets, I don't think presents any significant tax liability. Um, We've, we haven't been guided as to it being any significant issue to us. I think the tax position will, will be reflected on um, our, our revenues at the end of the year. So we have a question from Instagram as well, which is, I, I think is what a lot of people want to know right now, because we hear, whenever we start hearing about companies making moves and doing acquisitions and plans for growth, we start thinking IPO. So we have Rika on Instagram. Rika says, IPO? Simple question. Are there any plans for that in the mix? We, it's an active um, point of discussion. Um, we are getting advice. Um, lots of discussions about it, but we have not made a decision as to whether we're going to be listing or not. But it is something that we're actively discussing. Well, is it a situation where you need, like you have plans that you need funding for? Every business does, um, especially if it's uh, your business that wants to, to achieve exponential growth. Um, when you are a business that relies on, um, you know, the, the, the revenues from your business, um, cash flowing growth is is. It, it can mute your growth. Um, and we, we recognize that the, the, the idea, the potential of listing can free up a lot more cash, uh, open up a lot more opportunities. And, and that's why we're giving it a serious thought as to, as to whether we should um, pull the trigger. So this particular acquisition was funded entirely in-house? Um, I, I will say that it was not, um, we didn't use debt uh, to, to make the acquisition. I'll, I'll leave it at that uh, in terms of 
the, 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 the how in how we made the acquisition happen. Okay, Ryan wants to know: Does Fish Oils have its own retail store branches, or if not, do you plan to open your own retail stores or fish oil brands? We do have one location at Devon House. Uh, it's shop number eight at Devon House. So please, if you want to uh, purchase the Cyfresh Oils line look in, in Kingston, you can go there. You can come to 77 Old Oak Road, which is where our head office is. Um, but you will also find Starfish Oils in, in numerous uh, supermarkets, um, gift shops. Uh, we're, we're in most of the hotels on the North Coast. So we have a pretty strong and diverse footprint. How are you on exports? Are you exporting any of these brands currently? We okay. So Fleetwood currently exports to Barbados, Trinidad, Cayman, Saint Martin, and a couple of the couple of the islands. Um, Starfish Oils, I think, has huge potential in in um, finding its place in other markets. So we're we're traveling to Trinidad and Barbados in May, and we're going to be introducing. Uh, the lines to our existing dis distributors, and we see a, a great opportunity to, to really penetrate the North American market, the European market. We're making plans to, to um, build out a play page on Amazon so that we have a full selection of the Starfish Oils products. Um, so yeah, we, we clearly understand that there's a massive opportunity to get um, the Starfish Oils product into different markets. Awesome. Well, we look forward to it. We can't wait to see Starfish go global, as well as Fleetwood's to other brands, Zimmy and, and all of these things. Thank you very much. We're looking all forward best, to it. All the best, Richard, with your new acquisition, your new baby. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Awesome. All right. So viewers, it is now time for our poll question of the week, and it has to do with our lead story in What's Hot. Uh, it's a little bit dated because this was our story of the week last week, all about alliance and what was possibly going to happen. But all right, we want to get you to weigh in on this question now because we haven't had a chance to, to poll you, the viewers, about it just yet. So do you think Alliance and the Chin brothers should sue? the Financial Investigation Division and the Bank of Jamaica. Yes, their careers were destroyed for nothing. No, the FID and BOJ were doing their jobs. C, are taxpayers gonna have to foot the bill if they win? D, it's a waste of time. Other, leave a comment. Mm, interesting, let us know over on X, formerly known as Twitter, or also on the community tab of our YouTube channel, you can also leave a comment in the chat. Now, I want to know, have you joined the Money Mission community just yet? If not, here is a clip of what you may be missing. Take out the money for investing first. It's what they call pay yourself first. You probably heard this concept before. Right. It, has to go in, it has to go in your budget. It can't be the what left. It can't be that, oh, if I have any money left over, then I'm going to invest it. It has to be the money that comes out first. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Do we have a do we have an ad here? No. All right. So just remember to hit the like button. Up next, we've got your market recap and the analysts are standing by. Hey, money makers, join the KRM fam with our official merch. Get it now at KalilaReynolds.com. Let's get this money. The JC Combined Index was mostly flat last week. 125 stocks traded across the main and junior markets for the week, ending Friday, April 12, 2024. 58 made gains, 56 lost value, and 11 stayed the same. 143 million shares changed hands on the Jamaican dollar market, valued at $514 million. Spurtree Spices was last week's most traded stock. 
It took up 42% of market volume with 61 million shares trading. The stock gained 3 cents to open the new week at $2.50. Trans Jamaican Highway traded the second highest. The stock lost 3 cents to open Monday at $3.20. And Wigton rounded out last week's most traded with 15 million shares changing hands. The stock lost a cent to open Monday at a dollar and 14 cents. Now let's see who had the biggest gains for the week. The lab was the market's biggest gain up almost 28% last week. The stock opened Monday at a dollar 71 cents. MFS Capital Partners was the week's second biggest gain up almost 23%. And Express Catering was up 19% to close the week at $4.40. On the losing side now, First Rock Real Estate Investments was the week's biggest loser. The stock lost 18% to open Monday at $10. Margaritaville Turks had the second biggest dip. The stock lost 13% to open the new week at $14.11. And Laska Financial Services lost 12% to close the week at $1.67. Over on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, the composite index was mostly flat last week. Massey was the most traded stock. It lost $0.02 cents to open Monday at $4.35 TT. Prestige Holdings was the biggest gain of the week. The stock was up 12% to start the week at $14 TT. And on the losing side, Point Lisa's Industrial Port Development fell over 9% to open Monday at $3.70 TT. Over in the U.S., the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 were both up about 2% last week, while the Nasdaq was down roughly 1%. With the price of 87 gas going up $2.40 and 90 up $2.57. On the other hand, diesel prices climbed $2.63. In foreign exchange, it took an average $156.18 Jamaican to purchase one US dollar last Friday. Meanwhile, it took an average $113.45 Jamaican to purchase one Canadian dollar. One British pound cost on average $194.60 Jamaican. And you could buy one euro for $168.63 Jamaican on average. Finally, on the crypto markets, Bitcoin prices were down 6% over the past five days, trading at $66,321 US on Monday, while Ethereum prices fell 8%, trading at $3,246 US on Monday. Disclaimer, this is not intended as financial advice. Please consult a licensed financial advisor before making investments decisions. Welcome back, welcome back. It's time now for the analysts. And before I introduce our analysts for this evening, let me take some of your comments. Uh, first coming from Delroy, who said, I listened to Mrs. Reynolds on all other platforms, but never before on her own platform. Welcome to YouTube or Facebook, Delroy. Yes, you're on YouTube. Looking forward to continuing UK blessings. Thank you very much. I think you just left. So um, I, hope, I hope you got a chance to see this, or at least you watch it in the replay. Delroy says, that company is owned by father and son, and it's been operating for over 95 years by the same family tree. Are you referring to Alliance or Fleetwood? Well, Fleetwood is 50 years, so it must be Alliance. Sean says, yes, sue them. Absolute rubbish. BOJ needs to do better with the information. Jermaine is saying hi from China. Hi, Jermaine. All the way on the other side. Uh, Lanesra said, Alliance wanted to sell their company long time from they were looking to IPO. Sean again says, the persons that decide to make that move should also get fired from the BOJ and the FID. And then Stronglink says, the Chin brothers were my schoolmates. Brilliant guys. It's a disgrace what was done to them. And then we have couple of comments over on Instagram. So Plethora's Fabulous, shout out to Plethora's Fabulous joining from Portmore. Shout out also to Ham Reese in Florida. And who else we have? I think I saw somebody else commenting on Instagram as well, but I shout you out later when I see the comment. So time to introduce our analyst for the week. And that is business writer at the Jamaica Observer, David Rose. Welcome back, David. 
pretty Are interesting that it's just me this week. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. I know it's not been that long, but it just feels I that saw you in February. Maybe I just miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Kalila, it's it's been a what? A crazy call it four going five years now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. This remember, year. remember that Wilton, Mark Wilton, April mm-hmm. 2019. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So today we're discussing discussing Guardian Holdings annual report for 2023. Uh, what's going on with Guardian, a subsidiary of NCB, by the way? So just to give some overlay or context, so Guardian Holdings Limited is a Trinidadian-based insurance financial conglomerate. Uh, it's an NCBFG subsidiary, NCBFG being NCB Financial Group, owning 61.77% interest in GHL. And, you know, GHL you know, has some very iconic subsidiaries here in Jamaica. So you have Guardian Life Limited here in Jamaica and Guardian General Insurance. And Guardian Holdings, you know, came to Jamaica during the FinSat days and benefited tremendously by acquiring some of the failed insurance companies. And that's how we got these two companies we know today in Jamaica. So in the case of Guardian Life Limited, <clears throat> apologies, Guardian Holdings Limited, they just released, you know, their 2023 audited financials alongside their 2023 annual report. So to give some level of context, Guardian Holdings, you know, is spent planning to spend about 45 million US, about that's about probably 2.4 billion TT on a new Oracle system, you know, to Further consolidate the back office of Garden Life Limited here in Jamaica and Garden Life of the Caribbean based in Barbados. And this is all part of just, you know, further implement technology <clears throat> to further make operations more smooth, reduce some back office friction, and, you know, make it easier for the customer. So, in the case of GHL, they had implemented IFR 17 last year, which should have imp- impacted the whole the accounting for insurance is treated. So 2022 would have been the last year GHA would have been using IFRS 4, which is the old insurance standard. They're using IFRS 17 now. So as a result, everything has been restated. So as a result, under the new restated financials, their revenue went up by 27% to $7.57 billion TT, just to give that context. And you know, Although Jamaica only makes about 26% of revenue, Jamaica makes up 57% of the 399 million you know, TT net profit. Apologies, that should be about 400 million, 400 million TT. But that kind of shows the picture in terms of how big Jamaica is in terms of contribution. And you know they mentioned how the Dutch Caribbean, which includes the ABC Islands, and in extension you know, to the Netherlands, how is, is there on their fastest growing market? It's about 22% of you know their net profit and around similar margins for their revenue has also been contributing pretty well. In Jamaica in particular, you know, they're still trying to fully dispose of the remaining units at the Cambridge. So for those who haven't or still don't read newspaper anymore, you know, back in July last year, 2023. Garden Life would have put out an advertisement, you know, offering a $2 million J discount on the properties at the Cambridge. And that's along Musgrave Avenue, where, G- where Garden Life Limited's headquarters is. And basically, that ad- I had that ad back in July 2023, back here, April 2024, I have the same ad out again. You know, the head of life and pension, Eric Hosen, pointed out that. They had about 50 units back in August around that time. Have a little or well, 40 still remaining on, the, on their books right now. So that's probably reflecting just the general stickiness with interest rates being so high alongside, you know, persons being relatively more conservative on certain purchases right now, considering on being equal. So you know, that's one of the major highlights coming off of GHL's, you know, 2023 financial year and they're looking to, you know, really spend heavier and grow a lot harder in 2024 as they, you know, look to the Puma capital towards Europe in the Netherlands alongside, you know, growing the base further in Trinidad alongside Jamaica. 
One key point, and I'm going to mention NCB earlier, Kalila, is that Bruce Bowen has been proposed to be elected to GHL's board. So for those who don't know, Garden Hall is limited as its AGM around May 3, or May 2, actually. In Trinidad, it's going to be hybrid, so Jamaican shareholders can actually watch virtually, and Bruce Bowen is being proposed to put onto GHL's board. So for those who don't recall, Bruce Bowen was is the current NCB Jamaica CEO, the bank. He's also on the NCB Financial Group board. And uh, this is just further integration of Bruce into the NCB Financial Group. He's also the chairman as well of NCB Capital Markets. So let's give some further context into this, this deeper integration alongside all that's happening. It's a lot going on with, with Guardian for real. I have Sean have, has a question. Sean wants to know what denomination does DHL pay, GHL pay dividends in, TT or USD? So Ian Shinapu, the CEO, explained this. So if you're based in TT, Trinidad and Tobago, you get paid TTD. If you're based in Jamaica, you get Jamaican dollars. If you're based anywhere else, you get US dollars. Oh. So I, hope that makes, I hope that makes some sense. Like, so yeah, you probably have some TT shareholder, well, Trinidadians, you know, based probably in USD or wherever, and you need to get their dividends, so they get it in USD. So you have those companies that, you know, might declare a dividend in one currency, but satisfy the needs of shareholders in different jurisdictions, they pay a different currency. So for example, you have Epic Property Fund, Value Fund, they declare Barbadian dollar dividends, because that's their reporting currency, but they pay US dollar dividends to us here in Jamaica. That, so, that is that we, pay, we get paid dividends in JMD. Is USD? No, so GH for Garden Holdings, if you're oh, based in Jamaica. You're talking get, about. Sorry, yes. yeah, Katrina thought thought. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> no worries, no worries. And for example, like when NCB and GK pay dividends in Trinidad, it's always that the shareholders they are going to get paid TCD. So it's just really based on where your dominant style in effect as to what currency you'll get paid in for those who are listening in right now. Any other comments on the chat, Kalila? What's that? Any other comments in the chat? Uh, I think I saw one more. Well, it's on a completely different topic. So let's just wrap up with, with Guardian first. Anything else you wanted to mention on Guardian before? Well, Stephen wants to know, is there a dividend calendar? So I don't have a dividend calendar on hand, but in terms of Guardian Holdings, they follow a semi-annual dividend structure. So pay out in April after the financial and audited numbers come out, pay out around September when the first six months numbers have been published and have occurred already. So that's really it with GHL. Okay, and then we had a follow-up question coming from Sean who wanted to know, so do you convert the TTD declaration to JMD? When you get the dividend uh, uh, stub or they remit the notice, they actually been paid, you see what the actual amount is. It's like you have a fixed uh, rate you can use or you can go on the bureau of and say, hey, this is what I'm going to get paid at. It's something you actually just know when you actually see it show up in your account and you see the actual notice remitted to you as to what the rate was used in that case. I think we're having some, we might be having some internet challenges. I don't know why our viewership numbers are so low. That is very unusual, but then questions are still coming in the chat. So something That's... is up. <laughs> well, is here. I don't know what's going on, but we have some questions in the chat. Let me ask them, Sean, again. So do you convert? No, I asked this one already. Yes, John, you did. John, does a shareholder have the option of receiving their dividends in USD or JMD? So you said if you're in Jamaica, you get JMD, but can you yeah. ask to get USD dividends? Boy, you'd have to ask Guardian that question, to be honest. Okay, I'm being informed that it might be JPS is the issue. Maybe some people are dropping off uh, because of electricity oh, yes. issues. What's, what's going on? Like I said, I'm off the island today, so I don't know what's happening. Oh, well, JPS, JPS was picking some mangoes on Sunday in Portmore, but uh, yeah, you know, their JPS has some disruptions recently. They mentioned, for example, you know, some accidents at light posts. So that's probably one situation. Probably with increased heat, you have probably just some overloaded, you know, systems 
could be that, but it's been a very active week, Kalila. Riverton, you know, JPS, like Jamaica is keeping as usual. <laughs> I'm, I'm being told power surges all over the island, so a lot of things are going on. Um, let me see, we had a couple other questions as well from Ricardo. So Ricardo wanted to know, how does GHL compare to Sajikor? And he said, the market has been largely ignoring GHL. Is this due to large nominal price, PE much less than Sajikor? So read GHL versus Sajikor, I would need to convert to USD to give a fair estimation. So GHL is one of the few companies that actually publishes a US dollar rate sheet for their financial statements whenever they're published. So if I was convert Sajikor Group Jamaica's numbers to USD, I probably get a fair estimate to give you. Uh, but basically, I know that you know in Jamaica, Sajikor Life, which is Sajikor Group's largest operating subsidiary, does bring in more profit than Garden Life Limited here in Jamaica. But I would still need to you know do some comparisons, basically using Sajikor Financial Company's numbers versus what GH has audited to get some context, but they're fairly large beasts. So for context, you're talking about Sajikor Jamaica being a $570 billion asset company. GHL is 34.8 billion TTD total assets, which translates to a little bit above 700 billion JMD. So I hope that gives some context, Alia. Uh, the size of the businesses. Okay, and Roswell. Then, Roswell says, "I rather Sajikor dividend no ninety six cents is is it ninety six cents or zero point nine six cents?" No, ninety six cents zero point dollar sign zero point nine six. Ninety six cents is good. Long time I don't see such dividend. Good for you, Roswell. Um, <laughs> few people weighing in on whatever might be going on. The thing is telling me that we only have two people watching us, which can't be right because I'm. Just let me explain. On, I'm seeing comments from multiple people coming in the chat. So there's no way there's only two people watching. So um, <laughs> jo jo uh, John says, JPS needs competition. Then you will see how they fix the nonsense they love to carry on with. Competition breeds quality, quality that benefits the customer. iBook was saying that the name changed from taking stock. So I didn't find it in the search earlier. Did it? I haven't even looked because um the thumbnail says taking stock i'm not sure if we put taking stock in the title it should be in the title but i'm away leaving everything up to the team we have a new producer as i told you guys last week rich says i had a power outage from sunday oh my goodness uh ryan commenting that ghl pays dividends twice a year in march and then in august again tremaine sean says 130 watching on youtube why did it just say one I don't know, maybe it's StreamYard that's given me an issue because then RR is seeing eight people on. That I don't know is, what's going on. It's a crazy night, Kalila. Like. <laughs> I don't but, know. It says one. I really don't know what's going on. Uh, anyway. There's a, there's a question I was asked earlier with GHL's PE. And for context, you know, Jamaicans still have a nominal pricing preference. So if a company is trading, the single digits, double digits, it's more preferred to a company that's trading uh, triple digits. So I have to remember that Guardian Holdings is trading at about 370 Jamaican dollars, trading at about 18 TTD, which is a little over 430 Jamaican dollars when converted. So yeah, pretty cheap in terms of our PE perspective, but the market doesn't have that stomach for what I would call expensive stocks then you're going to see that low trading liquidity because when you compare it just 100 units of ghl is about thirty six thousand dollars vis-a-vis probably getting thirty six thousand units of just a one dollar stock mm. rodney says want to be a shareholder soon Sign out. Well, telling me to sign out and sign back in. I'm, just, I'm not gonna bother. We're still. You guys can still see us. I'm not gonna let the number trip me up. Although it was just you now messing with my mind. But but as long as you guys can see us and hear us, we're good. We're soon finished anyway. Uh, Sean says Google said one TTD equals twenty two JMD. So GHL declared a dividend of fifty three cents, which means it's twelve dollars and thirteen cents JMD. Adding that's a nice dividend. All right. 
not bad, not bad. Uh, before we go, we had a comment. Somebody wanted to know what's going on with TJH. You've been so, eyeing that one. I think I saw it just now in market recap, and somebody said it made them cry. What's, what's happening with TJH? So, if you follow TJH for the last probably three and a half years, you know, since dividends have been paid out, whenever TJH has a dividend declaration, it's pretty strong, pretty large, and you know, once the X date kicks in, TJH's stock price just <laughs> goes back down. So, you know, it's a consistent trend. So for those who don't know, if you want to get a dividend, once you own the stock and the X date arrives, you can sell on the X date and collect a dividend. Explain so, what the X date is. Oh, sorry. So you have three particular dates when dividend is declared. X date, record date, payment date. Your X date is the date before the record date. The record date is when whoever is on record at that point, only whatever number of units, that's how many that will be recorded times a dividend declared to give you your dividend payment. And then the payment date is the day when the dividend is disbursed to your bank or brokerage account. So in the case of TJH, I believe it was probably March 28 was the record date. So you saw TJH have some level of slow, I should say slow down or just a sleep decline. So they were trading as high as $3.70 earlier in March. You know, persons were facing probably a higher dividend. And you know, as it look close to the X date, that's trend down, X date pass, and you know, it's back down to $3.20. So a 50 cent drop in a sense, you know, it's pretty substantial for some persons. That's more than 13% decline in just, you know, a month. But at the same time, the dividend is being paid, paid next week, uh, Wednesday, the 24th of April. So persons can look forward to, you know, that dividend payment in short order. In so, people, the, so basically people jump in to get the dividend and then jump back out after they get it. It's a strategy, Kalila. It's called dividend harvesting. You know, you go in, you qualify for the dividend, and you exit as quickly as you can, capture any gains you might have accumulated, and go on to the next stock. You call it dividend guaranteed, and you just move on. Dividend then, harvesting. Okay. And then read TJH as well. You know, there's, they've exercised their right of first refusal for the new phase of the highway, which is Maypen to Williams Field, phase 1C. Uh, that has been the freeness of the highway, should I, I should say, has been extended twice. So it was extended to March 31. It's been extended to July 1. No. So, you know, so they're just kind of waiting for that announcement that TJ has successfully signed the agreement with the NROC, you know, to operate phase 1C, to increase revenue. So TJ is kind of this phase whereby persons are looking at, you know, the potential semi-annual nature of dividends, alongside you know the new phase of the highway that is potentially coming so that's another factor to consider as well right so orville was just making that point says factor in the extension for the free toll and then sean said do you believe the announcement from the government about finalizing of that leg being put off to june contributed to the falling price that's one factor but you also have to look at the fact that you would have seen a director sell a substantial number of shares on the market around March 20 to 25. You know, they sold about 9 million shares, which sounds small compared to the total number of TJH shares, but pretty large in context uh, for what the what data volume is in most cases. But yeah, you know, just the extension of the new phase, you know, is potentially weighing on some persons' minds alongside liquidity concerns. Because for many persons, they would have expected that with the announcement of the high bid opening in September, TJ should have been operating it already in 2024 to some capacity. So for it to have been pushed back again down to July 1, July 1 might come and it might push on again. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, disparaging in a sense when you think about it, because TJ does make its continued revenue from the Portmore, from the Maypen, from the Spanish Town Vineyards. And from the clear and from the Calius Clarendon and the Portmore leg, but person still want to get here that that new phase has kicked in because that's our whole business model, just operating the highway. So 
the salary is open, freeing is continuing, and it's not under their purview to operate as it and generate revenue. So, so read the dividend harvesting strategy. Lanesra makes a point here. She says you could be losing if you jump in high for dividends and come out low. Cause yeah, you tend to see that build up before the dividend date that the prices go Next up date, and then yeah. dividend date, and then after the dividend, then the prices go down. So if you jump in high just to get your dividend and then have to sell off at a lower point, 50 cents in this case, you could end up losing more money than you gain from the dividends. But the thing is, this is where strategy comes into play, Kalila, because if you realize that the price was potentially going down or you're starting to peak off, you could have sold, then just bought back the stock, you know, after it fell to low bar when the X date came around and you'd have more units on hand, they get a bigger dividend later in the year, if anything. So it's, you know, after one way strategy where you just hold until X date, then sell, you know, there are different dynamics to every stock, but at the same time, if uh, you've bought the stock at $1, a 10 cent dividend has been declared and the stock goes to $1.20, you can potentially consider the selling stock at $1.20 and buying back at $1.10 or $1.05 and having more units on hand instead of just waiting for the dividend and then trying to sell at a dollar again. So you can, you as an investor have to strategize how you're going to approach dividends in context because the market does change. Persons have their different preferences or needs to get cash. So you can't, you know, just have a own way strategy of, hey, I'm going to hold until the dividend kicks in. You have to be more dynamic. And that also comes on to a longer short term strategy as well, because in sometimes I will, you know, buy a stock, hold it for the dividend, and based on how I plan my time and what I see in the market, I might just hold it to the end of the month or end of quarter. Not end of quarter in most cases, but end of month. And so when the stock goes up considerably and there's a lot of buying pressure in that particular period. So I get the dividend and I also get the, you know, capital gains. Mm. So there are different ways to basically, you know, tackle this, what you call slow market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this year, well, come from last year into this year, I was telling persons about preference shares. I was, a, you know, just something that was out there. Some preference shares are trading below their maturity or par value. You know, for example, JMB GL, uh, 6%. Jimmy B changed the terms on that, so it's now eight and a half percent. That was trading at a dollar back in November, trading to dollar nineteen today. Earlier this year, in around February, Jimmy B GL spec with seven five C. This is a US dollar stock, trade at a dollar fifty four, trade that's at two dollars and two point one five earlier this year. Jimmy B GL seven point two five C, trade as it was a dollar seventy recently, dollar forty six, trading at two dollars, dollar ninety nine. JMB GL 9.5 now, trading as was $1 like in November, trading as high as $1.20 or $1.30 right now. So this is just me giving context to the fact that the market is what you call slower for some persons, but at the end of the day, your strategy has to evolve into what value is there in the market you can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So there's always an opportunity. No matter what's going on, there's always an opportunity. But this is where education, like a taking stock, comes into play because, you know, I've written about preference shares. I've talked about preference shares like crazy. You know, imagine, Kalila, you getting a preference share at dollar fifty-four. You have 100 sh here shares, it's $154. And the preference share matures at $2 within a year. You're getting $46 basically in just free capital gain. And that's before you factor in the dividend you get over that time span as well. So... If you're a person right now that's not looking to trade aggressively, that's just one route that could be considered to benefit from some level of stable income flow at a pretty decent yield without taking up certain levels of liquidity or trading risk. And that's there seems to be quite a bit of interest in the strategies you're outlining. Tremaine wants to know, would compounding the dividends be the best strategy here too? So you have multiple ways to, you know, take advantage of the market. So you have some persons, they will, you know, well, in the U.S., for example, you have automatic dividend reinvestment. So like with TD Ameritrade, you just set dividend reinvestment, the dividend is paid out, it automatically reverses back into the stock. And you have persons that, you know, will just set that, set that and go. Like 
get the dividend, buy the stock again, just rebeat and continue. And that's how you had some persons, you know, accumulating their pension stock in a sense over probably 10, 20 years. Dividend got paid out, so that what they'd call a fair price, where they just bought more of the stock with a dividend payment and just kept compounding them for them. And, you know, in this current environment, you have EOJ CDs. Some brokers are as low as $100,000 minimum to buy in. And I'm just giving all these strategies to just give persons ideas as to other ways that you can think about making money in this environment. Because persons are going to say there's not much money, the stock market is slow. But as I'm going to note, you have different instruments on the stock market. You have BOJ CDs. You have your bank's own CDs. You can, you know, look at the dividend strategy that is coming out to some companies increasing their dividends, so like uh, Dolphin Cove, a Trans Jamaica, Scotia Group. So these companies are increasing their dividend payments. And what you are also seeing, which is what I do sometimes in my days, is that some of these stocks are exhibiting, you know, very weak uh, buy side or buy queues. So I will just layer my order into that queue so that, you know, I don't have to necessarily bid up to, for example, $3. I can buy two dollars eighty, for example, instead. And the person mentioned the JMB GL seven point three five. So JMB has multiple preference shares, and just to give context, a seven point one five and a seven point three five. Those are fixed rate dividends. So point zero seven three five times three dollars, because that's the par value. Same math, math basically for the seven point one five. The JMB GL 9.5, the JMB GL 7.25, C 7.25, and another one. Those JMB ones are variable rate. So for 2024, the JMB GL 9.5 is paying 9.5% multiplied by the par value of $1. The JMB GL 7.25, C is paying about 9.41% annualized for the next year. You have the JMB GL. USD preference shares, 5.75 C, par value is $2. 5.75% multiplied by that to give it the annual dividend. So all US loans are fixed as well. And I, you know, for example, bought Apple at Apple 7.5 at 5.02, par value is 6, 7.5% annualized dividend. So, like, sometimes I don't trade some days, I just sit back and relax. Like, I put an alert. Just didn't know when a particular price has been triggered, but if a deal comes out there and I see it, I'll just get it. And in some instances, if the market is paying a price that is well above, you know, the remaining value on that preference share in the time, I'll just sell it and put the money to work elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think we need to do I think we need to do a couple of sessions in money mission on investment strategies, David, because we have more questions still coming in could talk about this all night but i think we need to organize something in money mission on (laughs) investment strategies to go into more detail last question i'm going to take tonight comes from stephen and only because stephen has been very persistent tonight he's typed this question multiple times to make sure that i see it so stephen bala you're up uh one gs i don't know if you've been following one gs an ipo Uh, he says thoughts they just declared an interim dividend and seem to have a lot of cash on hand for acquisition. So your thoughts on 1GS? Well, it's a good thing that, you know, we've seen such a very recent dividend, you know, subsequent IPO, it might not always say to some companies so quickly, you know, so for example, dollar listed in June 2022, by November they declared a dividend. So some companies pay out within a six months time and after listing, but in the case of 1GS, it's a much higher dividend than last year in context to their pre-IPO dividend. And like cash on hand doesn't just mean acquisition opportunities. It also means they have leverage to do deals or take on particular projects that other firms might not have the capacity to do. So people should always remember acquisitions are one way to grow business, but that same cash you have on hand does give you the buffer to take a risk on to new projects that your competitors might not be able to stretch based on their own financial constraints. So yeah, acquisitions are there, but what's about the company taking that same cash, make earn extra from a BOJ CD or repo alongside taking that same cash to 
try new ideas or strategies or business lines to grow the business even further. So I hope that answers your question, Stephen. Re one GS. It's about a year now since their IPO. No, September twenty twenty three. That's when they listed. August two thousand and twenty three was when they IPO. Feels longer. Feels like it's been forever since we had an IPO. So one GS was the only IPO for last year of ordinary shares. Mm -hmm. You had Mayberry's bond IPO back in January, listed in March, and you had AS Bread and Holdings listing by introduction in November 2023. So IPOs are kind of scarce now compared to like I keep hearing about them coming up. Like I keep hearing little things, but it just isn't happening yet. And I, I already know, like we know the drill, David. When we start hearing, oh, we expect IPO April, that's probably going to be like October. <laughs> For the most part, that's how it works. Because the approvals take forever. Even though the company might be gearing to go, you got to wait on those approvals. And, and the, and the oh, standards have increased post-SSL. So. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, that's it for tonight, David. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We'll see you. You're welcome, Kalila. Take it easy, gonna, everybody. We're up in Money Mission. We need to do something in Money Mission on investment <laughs> strategies. Sure. All right, let's take our final break and come back with your comments. Butterfly in the sky. What? I can go twice as high. So if this is you, download my free e-guide right now, Financial Terms Made Simple. It's a list of 40 commonly used financial terms broken down into simple language. Because don't you just hate when you look up a word and it gives you an even bigger word as a definition? So this is not that. I've made it as easy as possible so you can just whip it out and use it as a quick reference when you hear a term that you don't really understand. That way you don't miss investment opportunities because you were too embarrassed to ask what a bond is or what an IPO is. Let's get this money. All right, let's wrap up with your final comments. Let me see what we have. So John, perfect timing, because I was just talking about this. So John says, by the way, Kalila has a great finance mini course on investing. Thank you for the endorsement, John. I appreciate that. Wendy Ann says that my eyebrows are on fleek. Well, thank you, girl. <laughs> I broke saying that the name changed from taking stock, so he didn't find it in the search earlier. Um, oh, it, I think he was referring to the name of the channel. So the channel name was always Kalila Reynolds Media. The channel name is not taking stock, but the show is taking stock, and you can find that as a playlist under my channel. And usually once you're on the channel, you will see upcoming live stream at the top of the page. So once you're on my channel, uh, it should be pretty easy to find. Uh, Tremaine says, big up Cal and the money team. Thank you so much, Tremaine, big up yourself. Natoya wants to know thoughts on the new NCB bond. I saw that email come in with the offer. The, the terms look pretty good. It's as high as 12 point something percent. Let me see if I can find the actual numbers. So the minimum, investment was i think a hundred thousand jmd and the interest rates range between 10 and about 12 percent probably 12 point something let me find it ncb bond, ncbfg bond is now open yes here it is it says increase your income ncb financial group limited jmd senior unsecured corporate bond is now open so you got two years. They're looking to raise up to 2.5 billion under that one. And it pays 11.25%. So higher than I even thought. I was saying 10 point something. So it starts at 11.25%. And then three years, they're paying 11.75%. And the five year, they're paying 12.5% per annum. And all of these interests, uh, payments are paid semi-annually. So every six months, you're going to get your interest. The minimum subscription is $100,000. They're looking to raise $5.5 billion across all tranches or $6 billion in the event the offer is upsized. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Um, NCB is a pretty stable company. I would take a look at their not just their financial statements, but their credit ratings. 
So NCB is rated, I think they're rated by Caracris. So I would take a look at their credit ratings. But if you trust that NCB is a stable company and will be able to make these interest payments and repay you your full amount in two years or three years or five years, whichever one that you decide to sign up for, it sounds like a pretty good opportunity to me. Bearing in mind that this is not financial advice. I am not your financial advisor. Do consult a licensed financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for our show tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for watching yet another week. Thanks again to Richard Cole, CEO of Fleetwood Jamaica, and David Rose, business writer at the Jamaica Observer, for joining us. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share with a friend. Subscribe to the newsletter at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter. And turn on the post notifications so that you can be the first to see everything. When it drops, we want to help people learn more about money so we can all get this money together. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Kalila Ray. And remember, that is my only account, or those are my only accounts. I only have one. There's no backup account. So please report any scammers and impersonators whenever you see them. And if you want to connect with our analysts this week, check the description box below for David's contact information. Also visit the website, kalilarunnels.com, for financial information you can use however you like it. You can watch, you can listen to the podcast, or you can read our recap articles. Now tell a friend about taking stock because investing is the new sexy. So let's make it cool to talk about money. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Thanks for watching. Thank you.